Hey, welcome to Jeremy's Tech Channel. And today we're gonna to be checking out LXQT 1.1. I am slowly but surely becoming more and more a fan of the LXQT desktop environment. It's like having KDE, but it's, you know, more lightweight, and but still has some of the same features. And when I'm rendering a lot of video, when I'm doing a lot of tasks, you know, I still, I like to optimize my system as best as possible. I'm still not ready yet for a window manager. I'll get there at some point, but LXQT may be hitting the sweet spot, you know. We're gonna go over to LXQT's webpage and just see some of the changes and updates that they've made. Then we're gonna to go to a live environment. There is a spin of Garuda Linux with LXQT already themed and installed. And I thought it was pretty interesting. So we're gonna check that out, see what's updated in LXQT and hopefully learn something new guys. All right, let's check it out. This is the release of LXQT 1.1. The version that I've been using is 0.17. So <laughs> I'm like, okay, there's gotta be some major changes here. So it looks like it depends on uh, Qt 5.15. It also says LXQT's file manager now supports the file manager DBus interface, which is used by some apps like Firefox and Chromium. Okay, their themes are improved. The bookmark functionality is improved in Q-Terminal. I've just started really using Q-Terminal more. I installed it on my local system. I'm starting to install it on my virtual machines as I'm learning to work through. I, I personally like Q-Terminal. A simple option is added to the LXQT session settings for global screen scaling. Tray icons with the charge percentage inside them are added to the LXQT Power Manager, AKA the battery. Translations have received many updates and other changes that can be found in change logs of LXQT components. So they gave us the biggest highlights. My favorite name for a file manager. At first I was like, this is weird. And then it just rolls off the tongue and it's glorious. The PC Man FM dash cute. I love PC Man FM. <laughs> I just think it's awesome. PC Man FM. They added uh, some pieces like recent files, open in terminal, an issue is fixed in positioning of sticky items on desktop, okay. Moving of bookmarks and bookmarks context menu is fixed and some icons are added in the menu. Okay, great. Now they talk about their panel. The panel, in my personal opinion, was minimal and I know it was minimal on purpose, but as you'll see soon, it's still minimal with uh, just some refreshing of some look, which I definitely appreciate. Legacy tray icons are shown inside the status notifier when the system tray plugin is enabled. Panel config dialog is split into three sections for having a sleeker GUI. Q terminal, the bookmark functionality has improved a lot and example bookmark files are also added. Several old issues in the dropdown mode are fixed. I love the dropdown mode. I'm able to hit F12, it comes down, it's glorious. I love it. They have some new themes, some parts with the power management, the session, the desktop notifications are polished and they are, they look They look nice. Look, a lot of times when KDE or GNOME or even XFCE comes out with a new major update and release, we're all like, woo, you know, it, it's great. It's new, there's some great new features. You know, and I figured why not give LXQT some love as well? So we're not only gonna to get to check out LXQT 1.1, we're also gonna to get to do a quick check of the Garuda Linux spin of LXQT, which is awesome. I love that. You can see this notification right here, which is great. And Garuda Linux always has a welcome screen that you can have booted up, but we don't need that for today's walkthrough. A right clicking your menu here, is what you are used to. You can sort what you've right clicked right here. I love it. You can show hidden and you can hide desktop items. Okay, let's hide desktop items. It gone. There was a home folder there. And I can bring it back. This piece here, create launcher, desktop preferences, okay? You know, changing the icon size is always nice for people. So if you really need to make that crazy huge, you can. Getting your wallpapers here is quite easy. Garuda Linux has their own themed ones that they love to give you. So if you were tired of that and you wanted to apply, that is how you make that shift and change here. 
We are looking at the desktop environment, so pieces like that are important for us to see. You can enable a wallpaper slideshow. You can have a wallpaper change every five minutes. Maybe we'll see a change. Maybe we won't. I don't know. And then the visible shortcuts here, you can set up and remove as well. Okay, it's changing pretty fast. I don't know how long I can deal with that. So I'm gonna turn it off. It works, okay? Maybe that's your jam. That's fine. On your left-hand side, Garuda has set up LXQT with everything on the left-hand side as far as the menu bar, the panel, your system tray, all of that. On the top, you've got your menu here and you've got your pieces set up here. There are some LXQT specific pieces that we will walk through. We have the LXQT file archiver, which is great if you want to archive files. It is there. I haven't put anything on here yet. I was just checking out LXQT and Garuda's version, so I don't have anything to archive for us, but there is an LXQT file archiver, which is cool. Now, the PC Man FM QT file manager. What? I love it. Now, if you're already, your eyes are hurting from the neon theme, I'm sorry. If you absolutely love it and you're drooling with this icon theme and the theme of Gruda Linux, you're welcome. It seems to be a pretty polarizing look. I personally like it. I do think it makes things a little more difficult to, if you're used to seeing an icon a certain way, like GIMP or something like that, it does make things a little more challenging for someone like myself. I love the intentional theming and it looks great. So you have these pieces here ready to go on the left-hand side. It's a file manager and it works well. Graphics, LX image. All right, so we have this image viewer here. We will quickly go to a file I just downloaded and there is Tux, it works. <laughs> you know, something that's supposed to be simple should be. And that's what this image viewer is. I can zoom in, I can zoom out. It works great. So just for you to see, you can see this is Gruda Linux. This is the 5.17.4 Zen kernel. You can also see this is LXQT with the window manager being KWIN and the theme and icons as well. So now I'm going to pull up HTOP and just see where things are running at rest. This is running 950 megabytes of these 16 gigabytes that were assigned to this machine. 15.3 gigabytes are still available. If I'm being honest with you, I thought I would see a little lighter situation here. And one of the beautiful pieces about LXQT is that you can still run a lot of Qt Framework applications because they also use that. So things like KDE Connect, you know, you're having to work with less dependencies because they're already available, which is nice. And this is version 1.1. So we put the web browser Fire Dragon here on this desktop and I will open up a different desktop and I will open up Stacer and I will put this here and we have the two desktops here. You have your two desktops here so you can see how desktop workspaces are here. You have your system tray over here which is nice and simple. So I pulled up my old Lubuntu install just to see what is running, and I'm wondering if it's a Garuda Linux thing. I don't know, but this is point zero. This is 0 0.17 version of LXQT, and it's only running 279 megabytes out of the gig that I had assigned for this install. So when it was telling me I was running 900 plus megabytes of memory on the Garuda one, I'm just not sure why that's the case. If you know, let me know. Now I do have swap set up here. There's another 243 megabytes that are being used in swap partition, uh, the swap partition of this drive right now, but this is more what I was expecting with that install. I don't know, what am I doing wrong? I'm not sure. I just pulled back up this session. I just restarted it real quick and I'm showing 745 megabytes being used, but it's not in the 
low two, I mean, high 200s, low 300s that I'm used to seeing. And I, I'm wondering if it's this install. So I'm going to take a look at that. Okay, so I quickly got LXQT with Endeavor OS, and I wanted to check out one piece here. This is more of a vanilla look and install. Let's just take a look and see what's actually being used. Now we're showing 446 megabytes used. I just wanted to see because it was so odd that there was so much uh, resources being used with that Garuda install. This is LXQT 1.1. It is running a little heftier than the older one, but not a problem for me. And you can tell this is just set up without any theming, any of those pieces. That is actually great because having your choice of looks is always great. I just wanted to show that real quick because it bothered me a little bit how much resources are being used on Garuda. If it's more than what some KDE installs are, What's the point of switching besides some of the, the, the workflow and pieces like that? Don't misunderstand me, but I, I really liked the idea of some of the simple UI, the clean UI and uh, using less resources as well. I felt better after looking at the Endeavor OS. I have 32 gigabytes of RAM on my system. That amount idling, just running the system is just attractive to me. You know, when I start doing, and I'm actually starting to do this channel a little more with some more production pieces, I'm gonna need the ability to render a lot of video quickly and the more resources, the better. Thanks for checking out LXQT 1.1 with me. Thank you for taking the time to walk through this. Desktop environments are fascinating to me. I love uh, the way people think you should be able to work and how to make it easy for you. Thanks for taking the time. See you later.